Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I'm gonna get the day started with my boy Elvis here and the one thing I know that Elvis loves more than anything and he can smell it is fish. Of course, he's a water monitor, so he loves fish. So I've got some beautiful little cuts of fish here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, Elvis, you wanna eat? Come on, buddy. There you go, buddy. And of course, we have these guys' target trains. You guys know that, which just basically means that he comes after a ball and will eat like that. Ready? Come on up here. Come up here with me. You're okay. Whoop, come on, baby. There you go. Whoop, careful, buddy. There you go. Well, I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I better get some more food here because uh, Elvis is ready to go. Come on. I know you love the fishes. You're such a good boy. I love you so much. Okay, one last piece. Come on over here. Come on, come on. Whoa, there it is, baby boy. Uh, good job, Elvis. So we're gonna go ahead and feed. I'm gonna hide this ball so he knows that there's not food anymore. And we're gonna feed a handful of monitors to get the day started. But we have a bunch of exciting things going on for sure, including getting the floor done next door. Uh, definitely getting wrapped up. And uh, guess what, guys? 13 days till install. Next up is Ubasuku. Uh, unfortunately, she's way up top over here. And I really like to feed her when she's on the ground here so we can continue our target training. So I'm gonna just go up and get her and make sure she knows that I'm not food by going up here and just taking her down. You're okay, little girl. You're right. How you doing, sweetheart? That's right. No, don't, it's not, no food, no food. Come on, baby girl. Oh. I'll just set her down for one second. Well, actually, I'll just climb on down with her. Here you go, sweetheart. Oh, she's such a good animal. Look at her, what a difference, huh? I guarantee you, Ubisuko will be really happy about some food. Whoop! There you go, sweetheart. There you go. Hey, whoop, whoop. There you go. <laughs> Again, this fish is a nice treat for them. There you go. And you can see that she's really more interested in the ball than the food. That's what that target training is all about, right? It's getting them to the point where they trigger off the ball and not the food. There you go, baby. There you go. There you go. Now just hide the ball now so she knows, okay, there's no more food coming. And even though there's a whole bowl of food over here, she won't even go after it because all she's waiting for is this ball. There you go. Give her one more piece. Come here. Come here. Come here, come on, come on, come on. There it is. You want one more? Oh, <laughs> there you go, sweetheart. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take the ball away now and uh, Ubisuka should be good to go. Right, girl? Right, girl? Good job, baby girl, you did so good. Today's a big day over here at the new expansion. Of course, we're doing the floor today. Don't know that it's gonna be done today, but they're coming in with all their equipment and they're gonna be grinding the floor out. That's the first step of actually epoxing it. Uh, good chance it might be tomorrow, but we have to, and I mean, Lori, Eric, myself, have to move all this stuff off the floor because obviously they have to grind the whole floor. So uh, they're gonna be bringing gear in. I'm gonna be moving this stuff downstairs just to get it out of the way. and. Uh, Today is a cool day. It's a day I've been waiting for for a long time. It's gonna look so amazing when it's done. What's going on party people? Up here in the colubrid room, you're probably thinking to yourself, what's all these sticky notes doing? Cause that's what I'm thinking. We're moving snakes up. Can you believe that? They're growing up, they're moving away. They're not moving too far though, just in the next aisle. So that's pretty cool, still get to see them. Well, here's one of our 50-50 cow kings right here. And we are actually, you know, line breeding these guys essentially to make the all white ones. But you don't have to anymore. Cause I learned a little magic trick. Look at that, okay? We're gonna make millions. Millions, I tell you. Practicing a lot, but I think we've got it down. First, I had a problem with them. They would be like inside out and stuff. In all honesty, Argamus isn't that interested in fish typically, but it sees the ball right now, so it knows it's got food coming. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this, and just go ahead and let this little monkey out. Come on, bud, come on, come on. See, you don't see him as interested in fish as he is in say rodents or something like that, but still he'll eat this it's a, and it's a good variety for him. So rodents, you can get him to jump around, run and chase you all over the place. When it comes to fish, not as much to be totally honest with you. Come on, bud. There you go, buddy. There you go. 
And again, it's good to have that type of variety. With all these animals, you want to give them as much variety as possible. And like I had mentioned, if I had a rodent right now, he'd be uh, climbing the walls for me. He's not so excited about fish, but, but I don't want to just give him one type of food all the time because it's not as good for him. Hard miss, you want one more piece, bud? There you go, buddy. All right, let's go ahead and see if Toothless wants it. I know he loves fish. There you go, Toothless. He loves it. Come on, bud, right here. There it goes. <laughs> Definitely Toothless favorite food by far is fish. He'll target on that blue ball. He won't follow it around as much as Elvis or Abasuku, but we're still working on that target training nonetheless. Come on, buddy. Oh, there's another one. There's another one right here. There you go, right, bud? There you go. One last little piece for you, all right, buddy? Right here. Right here, right here. Come on, toothless. There it is, buddy. <laughs> You're such an amazing little monkey. I told you, I love starting my day out, getting a chance to interact with these amazing urban dinosaurs. You know, Toothless here is unbelievable. I cannot wait till he gets the size of Elvis. That's for sure, because he is so unbelievably socialized. What an incredible animal. And the intelligence of the monitor lizards, I mean, I tell you what, I am in love with these guys, and I cannot wait to add the croc monitor and some other monitors next door. So that concludes feeding the monitors for the day. So obviously the first part of doing the floor is to grind the edges down, right? They have to actually do that with a hand grinder. And then ultimately the big floor grinder comes out and does the rest of them. Uh, and then we just have to kind of see if there's any kind of imperfection. We can see a little crack right over here. Just have to fill that, make it look as good as it can. And then uh, once it's all grinded, then they can put a prime clear coat down and then ultimately the finished coat with some kind of grit so that it has some texture. Probably gonna be sometime tomorrow before we'll actually see an end product. And it takes a little bit of time to drive. So it might be a couple days before I'm gonna be able to walk around and show you guys, but nevertheless, uh, a huge, huge part of the kind of expansion here. It is gonna be ridiculous when it's done and it's gonna take it to the next level. And of course, just on the other side of this wall is where they're grinding the floor. So we obviously took out the frills and stuff like that, uh, put some paper towel in some of the holes just to kind of keep that weather from coming in because it's cooler next door than it is here. That's gonna be a challenge for sure. When we're moving enclosures in, we have to somehow seal this off so that cold air doesn't come in because obviously the doors are gonna be off there while we're moving the enclosures in uh, and it's going to take us several hours so it's going to be really cold next door so we're going to have to maybe put some foam something like that and then as soon as everything is moved in ripping all of this down and uh, then the opening will be there forever. Guys, I've been excited about this package here. My buddy Eric Legrand actually is an inspiration and he has a company called Role Model. And uh, you can see the wheelchair here. What it is is he was a football player and he got injured on the field. And rather than uh, taking the road of feeling sorry for himself and so on like that, he has really inspired people beyond belief. He travels around, he talks, he, he is just an amazing person. And I could not be more proud to be wearing this Role Model shirt. I'm definitely gonna be sporting this one great cause. I'm going to put a link in the description. Go show him some love. Follow him on Instagram. Trust me, when you follow his story, you will be so inspired. I mean, he's a great human being. And uh, Eric, thank you so much for sending me this, brother. Uh, I, I love you to death and uh, keep up the good work because the world needs more people like you. Back to some ultrasounding, guys. So uh, I'm going to get the second half of the collection kind of ultrasounded out today so we have that baseline. Uh, this girl has about 10 millimeters. We'll go ahead and measure. And, you know, I can kind of cheat a little bit because I've seen so many follicles, I have a pretty good idea. Again, 10 millimeters, uh, you can kind of see if it's 10, if it looks a little bigger, maybe 11 or 12, that type of thing. So a lot of times we can just guess because one or two millimeters doesn't really make that much of a difference. So just gonna go through, crush out the rest of the ultrasound, get an idea where we're going. Definitely seeing a handful of females that are starting to have a little bit more follicle growth. Oh, you can see right there, I mean, much, much bigger follicles than this girl right here. We're starting to see a lot more of that just in the last week or two. So this one's all the way to 21 millimeters. So just gonna keep on going. Look at 
that right there. We're starting to see a lot more of follicles like this size right here, a lot more. The first ultrasound we had hardly any like this, and now they're really starting to pop. This is 23 millimeters. Usually once they get over 20 millimeters, I say you have a 90% chance of production as long as they're being bred. So uh, 23 millimeters on this girl. So uh, definitely a lot of progress just in the last week and a half or two weeks. This is a really pretty snake right here. And uh, it's at 17 millimeters. So that's that's really good. Starting to really pop them. I'm, I'm definitely liking the progress a lot more than I was a couple weeks ago. Again, we know we had a sticking off point a couple weeks ago. But now we're starting to see a lot more follicle growth, a lot bigger follicle growth. I mean, this is a perfect example here. We've got a nice, beautiful Mojave girl, and she's got 20 millimeter follicles. So definitely moving on. Making progress, slowly but surely. So in case you guys don't realize like why I'm doing the ultrasound or why we're doing the ultrasound, I should say, and this one's at 12 millimeters right here, is basically we want to start understanding where the females are as far as growth goes, when we should put certain males in, because at some point if we have a male that's not breeding a female, but let's say she has decent follicles like this girl right here, and she'll have, let's see, we'll go ahead and get a measurement here. She has 18 millimeter follicles. Mary, has this one been bred? So she's been bred twice, so we know that's great. You know, she has 18 millimeters being bred. Now, if she had, let's say, 15 millimeter follicles, but had not been bred, and this girl's gonna be interesting. She's a big girl, but I'm not sure if she's gonna have big follicles or not. My guess is she's gonna have some follicles. Let's see what we got. Yep, right there, right there, see? So, again, we're looking at probably about 20 millimeters, somewhere in that range. Yeah, 18 millimeters right there. And uh, Mary, has this one been bred too? Okay, so that's a good example. 18 millimeters, hasn't been bred. We need to get a male in with it. If the male that we have dedicated to this girl isn't gonna breed, we need to switch to a different male to make sure she gets bred. If she doesn't start to get bred, those follicles are gonna start going backwards. So it's really important. And then you can see an animal like this. It's really hard to tell. Just the color, the way it looks, just kind of the overall feel. It just tells me that it's probably got okay follicles. I'm not expecting huge follicles, but I'm expecting some follicle growth for sure. And you can see right there, 13 millimeters right in that range. So you can kind of just see when a girl is starting to take off and just kind of showing that kind of look to her, right? So uh, that's good, that's 13 millimeters. And this is all part of the kind of science behind the art, you know? So it's kind of a combination of art and science and trying to do the best. This girl has pretty small follicles right now, maybe like six millimeters, seven millimeters. So we don't have to do a lot of attention with this as far as breeding. We wanna focus on girls that have 12, 15, 18 millimeters. This girl, when she gets to 10, 12, that's when we'll start focusing on her. We have the last of the new animals all ultrasound. I just want to check a couple females. This girl was at 12 millimeters about two weeks ago. So we want to see if we've seen any growth. We've definitely seen some breeding and she's been feeding. So I'm assuming that 12 is going to expand and look at that. Holy cow. That's why you do the base ultrasound and you check back. This girl is from 12 millimeters all the way to 21 millimeters. That's what I want to see. Going to do one or two more and then we'll wrap up ultrasound for the day. This is actually an exanthic girl that was at 10 millimeters before. She's been bred a little bit, but not a lot of growth. Just a little bit of growth here. We'll just measure, I'm assuming just a maybe a millimeter, which sometimes happens. I would have certainly loved to see her grow more, but yeah, she's at 11 now, so one millimeter growth. This girl was actually at 10 millimeters. Uh, she's only been bred once, so I'm not assuming she's gonna get a lot of growth, but hopefully we'll see a little bit of growth in these things. Yeah, a little bit, you know, again, a little bit of growth, not too tremendous growth, but a little bit, let's see. She was at 10, she's at, you know, 14 now, so she's definitely growing. This girl was at 12 millimeters. Been bred once since the last ultrasound, so we'll see if we've grown. Yeah, there's some growth here. There's a follicle right there. We're gonna measure from side to side. We're at uh, 15 millimeters. So again, things are definitely progressing, looking good. So that wraps up the ultrasound for the day. And now that we have all the other baseline, we can go back a couple weeks and do what we're doing now to see if there's growth. Because if there's growth, that means there's good potential for the year to be successful. If uh, there's not growth, we just have to work a little harder. 
continue to work on the floor. Hopefully within the next day or two, we'll see a finished product over there. Uh, things are back on track here at the Reptarium. Again, 13 days till in, so it's gonna be crazy. If you enjoyed this video, can you do me a favor? We have a podcast now called Checking In. Right here, you can subscribe to that. We have Wednesdays and Fridays, and who knows what other days. You can watch an entire playlist of videos of uh, just crazy stuff like that I do all the time. Over here, you can hit that subscribe button for the vlog channel. Turn the post notifications on to the podcast and the vlog channel if you don't mind. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to someone, I promise. I'll see you guys tomorrow.